Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for the Castles of Tuscany. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we play through the first third, and I will be playing through the rest of the game in an extended playthrough video, which you can find a link to down below in the description, or by clicking the eye up there in the top corner. Now, I would like to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because it won the monthly poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of this channel. Now, if you would like to directly support the channel in the creation of videos like this one, then you can learn more about how to do that by going to patreon.com slash Games and I do hope that you would consider it. I'd also like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I begin, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. As you can see, each player has a set of territories in front of them, and these are made up out of these three different tiles that have different backs. One is an A, one is a B, and one is a C, and as part of setup, we can change the order of these and we can spin them, but we obviously cannot flip them over. Now, the players have decided to place them like this, and it is worth noting that you are not allowed to offset them as much as that. They must match at least twice like this. Now the goal for each of us is to try and spread out on our own personal territory because that will give us a wide variety of benefits as well as victory points and the player with the most points at the end of the game will be the winner. Now on a player's turn, they will simply draw cards into their hand or they could draw a hex into their storage or they can play a hex from their storage onto their territory. The hexes that go down over here must be adjacent to previously placed hexes and as soon as they are placed, you'll take the associated benefit that is listed on our player board. Now, in order to play a hex, we have to have two cards that match that hex's color that we can play from our hand, and you can spend two matching cards of any other color to count as one of any type. Now, every time a player takes one of these tokens from the supply, they will refill that from the leftmost open stack on their player board, and as soon as any one player has removed all seven of their hexes from the stack, there will be the first scoring of the game. At that point, all players will add up the number of green victory points that they have, and they will add that to their current red victory point amount, and then we will keep playing. Once one player has removed all of the tiles from their second stack, we are going to score again, and once one player has removed all of the tiles from their board entirely, that will signify that the game is coming to an end, and we will score for a third time. That means if you get green victory points before the first scoring, it will score three times throughout the game, and be worth three times the amount of points that it seemed. Now, there are several different aspects to this game that I have not covered just yet, like these upgrade tiles, these yield cards, as well as all of the resources over here in the supply, and I'll discuss how all of those things work as we are playing the game. Now, I think what we should do at this point is start playing the game, and for today's tutorial, we are going to be playing as the red player down here. Now, we have the starting player card, which is going to stay with us all game long, and at this point, let's go ahead and take the first turn of the game. So let's focus down over here on our area. Now, as I mentioned in the overview, on a player's turn, they can either draw new cards into their hand, take one of the tiles from the market and place it into the storage, or play a tile from storage out into the territories by spending cards. Now, at the start of the game, we don't have any tile in our storage. So I think for our first turn, let's draw a tile from the market. Now, I think we should take this orange tile right here, and then we can place that onto this reserve spot, and each reserve spot on our board can hold at most one of these hexes. Now, whenever you take a hex from the market, you have to immediately refill it, and you do so by taking the top hex from your leftmost stack of hexes on your board that currently has some. Now, these were randomly shuffled up, and it looks like this one is an agriculture hex, so we can add that right over here into the market, and that has finished up our turn. This means it's time for the blue player to go. And for their action, they are also going to draw a hex. Usually this is the thing that most players do on their first turn. In this case, they want to take this gray quarry hex and then they can place it over here. Now, as you can tell, the blue player has another upgrade tile right over here. And that actually gives them two different places where they can put these hex tiles down as storage. Now, at the start of the game, every player was able to take one of these upgrade tiles and multiple players could take the same one if they wanted to. In this case, the blue player took this one so they can store up to two hexes, and this upgrade also has a green two in it, which is why they started with two green victory points out here on the track. Next up, they have to draw the top tile from their stack, and it's another quarry. They can place that over here, and now the yellow player can go. They're going to start by looking at their cards, and then for their action, they also want to take one of these tiles. In this case, they're going to take this beige wagon tile and place that into their reserve. 
Next up, they have to replace the top tile, and this one is a blue in. All right, their turn is done, so now we can go again. And since our reserve is already full, I don't think it makes sense to take another tile for our turn. We could technically take one of these if we wanted to, but we would then have to discard a tile from our reserve to make room for the new one, and the discarded tile would be removed from the game. Now, instead of that, I think let's place this tile out into our territory. Now, the way we place a tile is we have to spend two cards from our hand that have a color that matches the same color as the tile. Now, this is an orange village tile, and we do indeed have two of these orange village cards in our hand. So we can put both of these into a communal discard pile to pay for the placement of this tile. But before we do that, I would like to mention that instead of playing a card that matches the color, you can instead spend any two cards of the same color that is different from this to make up for one card that was missing. What that means is right now we could spend an orange card as well as two red cards, or we could spend two red cards and two of these gray cards to make up for both of the orange cards that we would be missing. So that means when you're spending cards, you could spend two to four of them total. Now there is another way to get a discount when placing these out, and I'll talk about that very shortly. But before we get to that, let's now pay for this by discarding these cards and then place this tile down into our territory. Now, whenever you place a new tile down, it must be adjacent to a previously placed token. And as you can see, we have this castle right here on our territory. Now, the next thing that we have to keep in mind is that all of these tiles have to go down onto a spot that matches its color. As you can see, there is a single orange spot next to another tile. So we have to place this village right over here. And as soon as we place that down, we have to check to see if we score for the region. In order to check this, let's focus in a little more, and as you can see at the top of our player board, it says that we will get points for finishing a 1, 2, or 3 size region in our territory. Now the size of the region is dictated by the number of that color region that is orthogonally adjacent to itself. In this case, we can see that we just placed into this orange region that has two different spaces in it, so that is a size 2 region. That means as soon as this size 2 region has tiles covering both of its spots, we can then score for it. As you can see, when a size 2 region is completed, we will get 3 green victory points. If it's a size 1 region, which means a spot like this one or that one over there, we would just immediately get 1 green victory point, because by placing 1 tile down, we would have, by definition, completed it. Now the largest region size in the game is 3, and it looks like we don't actually have any of those possibilities on our board. Remember, as part of setup, we built this area in front of us by moving these around and potentially spinning them around, and it looks like we decided not to set ourselves up with any potential size 3 regions. While we are discussing region scoring, I would now like to draw your attention to these 8 different color bonus tiles in the middle of the table. There is one of these tiles for each of the different types of regions that show up on the territories in front of us, and once any one player has completely covered up every single one of a specific color within their overall territory, they will then take the associated number of green victory points on the tile. For example, the first player to cover up all of the orange areas in their territory will get three green victory points, and then this tile will flip over. As you can see, the backside says that the second player to cover up all of their green areas will get one green victory point, and once that happens, this will be removed from the game. As you can see, the number of points awarded for completing these does vary with the different colors, and that's because there are different numbers of these types of areas within each of the player's territories. So, as we can tell, we are not going to score this yet because we have to put another orange village tile down here to complete that size 2 region. Now the next thing that we can do is get the bonus that is associated with the color tile that we just placed. In this case, we can look over to our player board and take this bonus for the village. Now this says that we are going to immediately gain a number of workers equal to the number of workers that are showing up over here on our player board. As you can see, every player will always generate one worker, but at the start of the game, we decided to take this upgrade, which gives us a second worker, so that means every time we place an orange village tile down, we can take two workers from the supply. So we can take these two here and place them in front of us, and workers are great because whenever you are paying to place tiles out into the territory, you can spend a worker in the place of any card that you need to spend. That means technically, when you place a tile out, you could spend two workers and no card, you could also spend one worker and a card, or one worker and two cards that are the same type but not the same color as a wild. So you could go from spending two workers and no cards all the way up to four cards if you wanted to, giving each player a wide variety of ways to pay for these tiles. So we can put these right in front of us, and they are both effectively wild cards in our hand, and at this point we have finished our turn. With our turn done, blue can go, 
and they have decided because they do have another spot in their reserve, they are going to take this red city tile and place it over here. These are somewhat rarer than some of the other tile types, and they wanted to make sure to have one of these in their reserve to play out in the future when they are able to, because this has a very powerful effect that I will discuss later. After that, they can replace this with a new hex, and this is another wagon tile. Blue's turn is done, so now yellow can go. And they have decided to play two of these wagon cards to pay for placing this wagon token onto their territory. In this case, they are going to put it right over here because that is adjacent to one of their previously placed tokens, and that was a size 1 region, so that means they will immediately score one green victory point. This brings them from 0 up to 1, and once again, every time we do a scoring, we will add our green points to our red points, and since there are three more scorings in the game, that means that one point that yellow just got over here will turn into three red points by the time the game is over. After the region scoring, they can now perform the wagon effect, and that says they can draw a number of yield cards equal to the number showing up over here on their player area. Now, everyone always draws one by default, but the yellow player decided to start the game with this upgrade, so they are going to draw two of these yield cards, and they will immediately gain all of the bonuses shown on them. So, they can draw and reveal two of these yield cards, and the first one will simply give them one worker. We already know that these count as one wild card when you're paying for the tiles, so they certainly like getting that. And the other one says they can take one resource card from the top of the deck, and they can get one red victory point. And then both of these will be placed into the yield card discard pile. So that one red point brings them to one total, and then they can place that card into their hand and the worker in front of them. All right, that has finished up their turn, which means it's once again time for our turn. Now, as I mentioned, on a player's turn, they can either take a tile, play a tile, or draw cards, and I think that third option is the thing that we want to do on this turn. Now, whenever we draw cards for our entire turn, we look over here, and we gain a number of cards equal to those shown being held by a hand. As you can see, our board shows a hand holding two cards, which means our default draw is going to be two from the top of the deck, but if we happen to have this upgrade, that would increase the number of cards that we drew for our action to three. Now, if we had this and we drew something like that yield card, this does not actually apply. These bonuses only come when you spend your entire turn drawing cards. Now, I know I haven't discussed how we gain these upgrades yet, and I will soon, but for now, it looks like when we draw cards for our turn, we simply draw two from the top of the deck, so we can take those randomly, and it looks like we found a gray and a red, which is pretty good considering we already had a red and a gray in our hand. That means we have a pair of each, and there is one of the gray quarry tiles out there on the market, so hopefully we can take that one and place it into our reserve on our next turn. Of course, we do have two of these workers, so we could technically pay for any of these tiles, and perhaps we should have drawn one of those on our turn, but either way, having these extra cards is certainly a good thing. Well, it's now time for the blue player to go, and they are going to play two gray cards from their hand in order to place this quarry onto their territory. They can put that right over here because that is adjacent to one of their previously placed tokens, and that was a size 1 region, so they'll get one green point. So they'll go up to 3 total. Next up, they can perform the action associated with the quarry, and that says they can gain a number of marble tokens from the supply equal to the number of marble icons showing up over here. Now, every player always has a default of 1, but of course, if they are able to place these upgrades out, then in this example, they would get 3 marble for placing one quarry instead of 1. Obviously, that is not the case at the moment, though, so now they have finished up their action because they have taken the reward. Now, before we move on, I'd like to talk about what these marble tokens are used for. Now, on a player's turn, they can spend up to one marble back to the supply in order to take another main action. Once again, the main action options are drawing cards, reserving tiles, or playing tiles, and the blue player decides they may as well spend this marble right now. So they are going to send this back to the supply and effectively take another turn. After considering their options, they are going to draw cards, so they can take two from the top of the deck and add those into their hand. At this point, their turn is done, which means the yellow player can go. After considering their options, they would like to reserve a tile, and they are going to take this quarry that we were hoping to take on our next turn, so we are certainly not happy to see that. They can place that into the reserve and then refill that spot in the market with the top one from their stack, and it is a red village. All right, at this point, their turn is done. That means we can go, and even though we were hoping to pick up that quarry, I am just as happy to take this red village tile from the supply. We have two red cards in our hand, so that works out well, and there is a red spot adjacent to at least one of our tiles. So let's spend our turn taking this. We can put that into our reserve and then refill the market, 
and at this point, our turn is over. Now, before I move on, I would like to mention that if at any point there are five of the same type of tile over here in the market, then we would immediately remove all five of those and then draw new tiles from the top of one of these gray stacks of tiles. Well, our turn is done, so blue can go, and it looks like they have decided to reserve a tile. Now, they want to take one of these agriculture tiles right here, and they're probably doing that because they want to place this red tile out in the future, and right now, the closest red tile spot is one agriculture or a village spot away from one of their other adjacent tiles. So, they can place this right over here, and then they can draw a tile to replace that in the market. Now, this is another agriculture tile, and I'd actually like to point out that there are different types of icons on the agriculture tiles in particular. The rest of the tiles have identical faces, and the different types of agriculture that show up on these tiles will dictate how these agriculture tiles score as their action, and I'll describe how that works later on. In this case, the tile they took has one type, but the tile they're placing out here has a orchard as well as some vineyards, so that is two different types of agriculture. Well, their turn is done, which means the yellow player can go, and they have decided to place this quarry out onto their territory. Now they are going to put it right over here, and they have to pay for it with two gray cards. At this point, they are going to spend one gray card. They could also spend two cards of the same color that are not gray, but instead they are going to spend this worker as a wild card. So with that, the payment is complete, and then they will get one marble from the supply. That will go right in front of them, and then they've decided to use this immediately to take another main action. And with it, they are going to draw two cards from the top of the deck. All right, it's now time for us to go, and I think let's spend our turn placing this red village tile into our territory. We can place it onto that red spot and then pay for it by spending two red cards, and then we can gain one green point because that completed a size one region. That looks to be our first point of any kind this game. Next up, we can take the bonus associated with placing a red city tile down, and that says we can take any of the available upgrade tiles and place it next to our board. As you can see, there are five different types, and at this point in the game, I've actually discussed the benefits for all of these so far. Now, there are only five of each of these tokens, and as soon as all of them are gone, no one else can take any, and I think let's go ahead and take this one here. The game is still early, and being able to draw another card every time we spend our turn drawing cards does seem like a really good benefit. So we can place this over here, and I would like to point out that players will always have three of these red areas in front of them, so they can build up to three villages per game. That means they will always start with one upgrade and potentially get three more, so no player will ever have more than four upgrade tiles in front of them. Alright, our turn is done, which means it's time for the blue player to go, and they would like to place this agriculture tile out into their territory. Now that is going to cost two of their light green agriculture cards, and in this case they are going to spend three cards. One of them is indeed an agriculture card, and it shows the four different types of agriculture types. And then these other two are a matching pair of wagon cards. Remember, a matching pair of cards can equal one of any other card, so this is effectively paying the two cards that they need to place this out. Now they can put this right over here, but they have decided to place it over there instead. That, of course, is the first out of three spots in a size 3 region, so they have to place two more agriculture tiles before they can complete this region and get the associated points. The reason they went here, of course, is because that unlocks the ability for them to place this village tile over there in a future turn, but at the moment I am getting ahead of myself. At the moment, they can now take the bonus associated with agriculture, and that is simply going to give them one green victory point for every new type of agriculture that they added to that specific region. In this case, that region went from having no agriculture to having the wheat type of agriculture, so that's one new type, which will give them one green point. If, for example, they placed this tile down into that region, they would be adding the orchards as well as vineyard types. That is two new types that they would be adding, so that would give them two victory points. And also, for another example, if they placed this down, that would be adding a type that they already had within that specific region, so that would not generate any new victory points for them. Now, obviously, in this case, they can take one green victory point, which will bring them up to four. Well, it's now the yellow player's turn, and they have decided to reserve a new tile. After considering their options, they want to take this yellow monastery tile, which they can then put into their reserve. After that, they have to replace the spot in the market with a new tile, and this is a wagon tile. Well, it's once again our turn, and I think let's reserve a tile. 
Now, in our hand, we have two cards that are gray and one card that is the light green for the agriculture. And at the moment in the market, there are two agriculture tiles and none of the gray quarry tiles. So that might make me think about taking an agriculture one, but I think instead, let's take this dark green castle. The reason for that is because even though we don't have any dark green cards in our hand, we do have two of these workers that each act as a wild, so we could spend both of these to play this castle tile out, and the bonus for the castle is quite nice. Now I'll discuss what that bonus is on our next turn most likely, and now we can refill the market with a new tile, and that is yet another wagon. So currently there are three of those out in the market. Well, that's finished our turn, so blue can go. And they have decided to simply draw cards. In this case, that is going to be two from the top of the deck. Next up, it's the yellow player's turn. And they have decided to play three cards in order to place this monastery out into their territory. One of those is a yellow monastery card, and the other two are a matching pair of the dark green card, which is associated with placing castles out. So with that, they are done with the payment, and now they can place this onto the only yellow spot that's next to their previously placed tiles. So that is going to be right over here. Now that is a size one region, so they can immediately score one green point, which will bring them up to two. After that, they can take the monastery reward, which is going to give them three cards from the top of the deck. It's worth noting that this reward does not have a hand on it, so players will always gain three cards whenever they place a monastery down, no matter how many card draw upgrade tiles they have in front of themselves. Well, that's finished up their turn, which means it's our turn, and I think we have a great turn lined up for us. Now, as I mentioned on the last turn, I am planning on spending both of these workers to pay for both of the cards needed to place this castle out, so let's go ahead and do that. So these workers will go back to the supply, and then we can place this dark green castle out onto one of the two dark green spots on our board. Obviously, this one is not adjacent to another tile, so we have to place over there, and that does complete a size one region, so we can get one green point. This means we have two total, and now we can perform the action associated with placing a castle. As you can see, this shows the market of eight tiles out in the middle of the table, and it says that we can take any of those tiles and immediately place it down onto our territory as long as it is adjacent to a previously placed tile. In addition to that, we don't have to pay any cards or workers in order to place that tile down, so our only restriction is placing adjacent to a previous tile. Well, we currently are next to three different spots where we could put an agriculture down, we are also next to one spot where this wagon would fit, and we are next to one location where this blue in tile would go. Now, I think that is actually the one that we want to go with, so we can immediately remove this from the supply and place it down onto a legal spot on our board, and once again, since we are doing this as part of a castle action, we do not pay anything for it. Now, after we put this down, it is just like we had purchased a tile. That did complete a region, so we will go ahead and gain another green point. That's going to bring us up to three. After that, we can now perform the action associated with placing an inn into our territory, and that says that we can take one of these blue hexagon tokens from the supply and put it into an empty spot within our reserve. Now, in the future, when we are putting tiles into our territory, we can pay to place one of these blue hexagons, and this is effectively wild. That means this can be placed on top of any different color terrain, and when you do this, you have to spend cards from your hand that match the color of the terrain that you are placing down onto. After you place it, you will gain the reward that is associated with the color of the area where the blue hex was placed. So, this is effectively a wild tile, and that means on our next turn, we could use this as if it was a quarry in order to spend the two gray cards that we have in our hand. I'm not sure if that's what our next turn will be, but it certainly seems like a pretty good option. Well, that's finished up our turn, and at this point, I have now shown you the actions for all of the eight different types. Now, the next thing I'm planning on teaching you is what happens when we go into a scoring, and remember that happens once any one player has removed all of the tiles from the top of their first stack on their board. Now, you can skip ahead to see what happens there by going to the timestamp in the top corner, or you can stick around as we continue to play, and at this point, it's time for the blue player to go. Well, they're going to start by considering their options and then they have decided to draw cards, so in this case that will be two from the top of the deck, and that's finished their turn. This means yellow can go, and they have decided to reserve a tile. Before they do this, however, I just noticed that we left our turn with an empty spot in the market. Of course, we removed that tile when we placed our castle, and we should have taken one of the tiles from our stacks and put it over there, and now the yellow player could choose one of these options. Well, they would like to take an upgrade, so they are going to take this red city tile. 
that will go right here and then they can refill the market and in this case that is going to be an orange village tile so it's once again our turn and as much as i would love to take this village tile right here we don't currently have a spot in our reserve to hold it so i think let's go ahead with the plan i talked about on our last turn and spend both of these gray cards in order to place this blue hex out as if it was a gray tile now i think we should put that one well I guess we could put it over here if we wanted to have the possibility of placing another red tile in the future, but currently there are none out there. We could also place it over here, and that would give us the possibility of placing one of these ends that are available onto that spot. Now that would give us another one of these tiles, which is great. And of course, we have just two of the end spots on our board, so that means we would complete both of those and potentially get victory points for having covered up all of those spots faster than our opponents. I think that might be a better idea overall. So yeah, we're going to place this over here. Now that does complete a size one region, so we can take one green point, which will bring us up to four. Next up, we can perform the action associated with the spot where we put the wild wooden hex down, and that was gray, so that means it's a quarry. Now that is going to give us one marble because we have just one marble symbol over here, and I think let's immediately use this to take another action. Now, part of me wants to draw cards because we have so few, but I think the right call for us is taking this tile from the market and placing it into our reserve. This would be the second and final one of our villages to complete this region, which would give us three of those green points. And if we did that before the first scoring, that would score three times, so effectively three times three or nine points before the game is over. Now, if we are slow and this happens before the second scoring, that's still worth six points by the end of the game, so that's not bad either. Now, the main reason I want to do this is because we do have an upgrade for workers, and placing this down gets us two workers, which is effectively a wild payment for any other tile, so I think this will be good for us. Now, of course, we don't have any orange cards in our hand, and I imagine our next couple turns will probably be drawing cards from the top of the deck, so we hope we will find some orange, but of course, we draw three cards instead of the normal two, so if we have to, we can use some matching pairs to make up for the deficit. Well, we can now replace this with another tile, and it's another one of the villages, and that has finished up our turn. So, the blue player can go, and it looks like they have decided to reserve. They do have two reserve spots, which leaves them quite flexible, and they like the idea of having this dual-type agriculture tile to place into their territory. Before the blue player is done, they do have to refill the market with a new tile, and that is yet another one of those orange villages. Well, that's finished their turn, so now yellow can go. And they'll start by looking at their options. It doesn't look like they had to think too long on this. They are going to reveal two red cards, which they are going to spend in order to place this red tile out. And the only spot they can legally put it is right over here. That completed a size one region, so they'll get one green point, which will bring them up to three. After that, the red player can take an upgrade tile, and they are tempted to take the one that lets them draw more cards, but they think getting one of these extra worker tiles is going to be better for them. They haven't currently placed any villages out, and they are adjacent to a few of those as options, and there are two of them currently out in the market, and they like the idea of getting extra workers, which are essentially wild cards for the purpose of paying for tiles. All right, they are done, which means it's our turn, and with just a single card in our hand and no spots open in our reserve, I think we are definitely drawing cards. Now we are going to draw three from the top of the deck, so that is going to be a gray, a red, as well as a light green, we now have two of the light green ones, which is interesting. There is a single agriculture tile in the market, but of course we don't have a spot in our reserve to take it, and that was unfortunate we didn't hit any orange cards. I think it's likely on our next turn we are going to be drawing once again. Either way, we are now done, so blue can go, and they have a couple of options available to them. After thinking them through, they have decided to spend these two red cards to place this village out. They can put that right over there, and that completed a size one region, so they'll get one green point. This will bring them up to five points total. And then they can take any available upgrade. In this case, they have decided to take a marble upgrade. So in the future, they are going to get an extra marble when they build these quarries. And these are effectively extra turns, which can be a very powerful effect. They do have three more quarries total, so that could effectively be worth three extra turns for them before the game is over. Well, this turn is done, which means it's time for yellow to go. It looks like for their action, they would like to reserve a tile and they would like one of these orange villages. That's not too surprising considering they did take a villager upgrade tile. Now they have to refill the market with a new tile, and it is a yellow monastery. That's finished up their turn, so now we can go, and let's just go ahead and draw three more cards. 
In this case, we found light green again, another light green, and then a gray. So we didn't find any orange, but we could certainly make two pairs of two on our next turn if we want to spend four cards to place this tile out. Now, it was certainly unfortunate, uh, six cards and we didn't see any orange, but I guess that's not too surprising considering there are eight different types of cards in the game. Well, that's finished our turn, so blue can go. And they have decided to simply draw two cards. They are starting to think maybe they should have taken the draw cards upgrade instead of the marble, but they're still hoping their decision was the right one. Blue is done, so now yellow can go. And they are going to spend three cards from their hand to place this village out. These two are a matching pair of the agriculture cards, so that will make up for one of the orange that they need. And then they have decided to place this one over here, that way, they have the possibility of being adjacent to another one of the cities if one of those does pop up in the market. Now, that does not complete a region. That is a size 2 region overall. So now they can go into taking the effect, which is going to give them one worker for each worker showing up over here. And that means they can take two workers right now. All right, their turn is done, which means we can take our turn again. And you know what? I think let's just draw some more cards. There is no hand limit in this game, and I figure it's early enough in the game that we will likely find a way to spend all of these, and I really would like to find at least one orange card. So let's draw three. The first one is light green again. The second one is gray. We draw a lot of those, and another light green. Okay, well, it seems like the game is telling us we should be getting into agriculture. Unfortunately, this spot is being blocked right now, so I think it's likely we are going to do some two-for-ones on our next turn. We'll just have to see how we're feeling once we get to that point. This means it's now the blue player's turn, and they have decided they would like to play this tile. Now that is going to cost them two light green cards, and it looks like they do indeed have that. So these will go away, and they've decided they want to place this, well, they could go over there to immediately complete that area, but instead they want to push their luck and potentially try to complete this size 3 region before the first scoring. Now, once they put this here, you can see that that tile brings in orchards and the vineyards, which are both new types of agriculture for this specific region, which just had the wheat in it. So that is two new types coming in, and that is going to give them two green points. Of course, they did not complete a region, so they don't get a completed region bonus just yet, although they are hoping to finish this soon. Two green points is going to bring them up to seven. And with that, blue is done with their turn. This means yellow can go, and they want to reserve a tile. When they consider all of these options, they've decided to go with the village. That will go over there, and then they have to refill that spot in the market with a new tile, and that is a castle. Now, it's important for everyone to know that the yellow player has just one tile left on their first stack. So that means as soon as this is removed from the board, that will initiate the scoring, and currently they are the closest to making a scoring happen. So we all have to keep that in mind, although at the moment, yellow will likely want to play this tile out before they reserve another one, so we might still have a couple of turns until yellow potentially scores it. Of course, in the meantime, someone else could empty their first column, which would cause the scoring to happen. Yellow's turn is done, so we can go, and we do have just two of our tiles on our stack as well, so we're not that far from ending the round ourselves. Unlike yellow, we also have a bunch of cards in our hand, so it might actually be us to trigger it, but either way, let's now take our action, and I think let's not draw some more cards, let's just place this tile out so that we can gain the associated benefits and then take a new tile from the market on a future turn. Now, we don't have any orange cards in our hand or any workers, so in order to do this, I figure let's spend two of these agriculture cards, and then I think let's spend probably two more of them. Uh, we do have two left in our hand, which is certainly good, and I like the idea of keeping all of these quarry cards because we have a couple of quarry spots we could go into, even though currently there aren't any quarries on the market. So we're spending four agriculture cards as if they were two village cards, and now we can place this village right over here. Now that does complete a size two region, so we can now get three green points. That's going to bring us from four up to seven, and we are tied with the blue player. After that, we can activate the village, and that is going to give us two workers, so we can take those from the supply, and that has finished our turn. This means blue can go, and while they do have a few cards in their hand, they have no tiles in their reserve, and they have decided to take this tile here. Now, they could use this to complete that region later on, but it would not add a new agriculture type. That means they would not score for it, but of course, that would still give them six green points for completing a size 3 region, so that's still probably worth it to them, even though that's not a different type for that area. They could, of course, maybe do something else, and then place this over there in the future. They have certainly not committed to placing that over there. 
Now, at this point, they have to draw another tile from the top of their deck, and that is a city that can go over here, and now blue is done with their turn. This means yellow can go, and even though they have one card in their hand, they could technically place this tile out with just the two workers they have in their area if they wanted to. Now, that would free up the spot to potentially trigger the first scoring, and they've decided that's probably a good idea for them. Now, they do have one card, and if it's orange, they could use it, but it does not look like that's the case. So they are going to spend these two workers in order to place this village out over here. That has completed a size two region, so they could take three green points, which will bring them from three up to six, and then they can activate their village, which is going to give them the two workers right back. Yellow is done, which means it's now time for us to go. Now, we should certainly reserve a tile, I think, and the one that we should grab is going to be an inn. The reason for that is because if we place this down over here, that is going to be our second and final in total. And if we're able to do that before either of our opponents get both of their inns down, then we will get two green points. At the moment, neither of our opponents have placed any inns, so we are certainly in the lead. And getting these points is great, especially if we can manage to get those before the first scoring. Although I think at this point, it's likely the yellow player is going to cause the scoring to happen right before we could play this. Either way, I think this is still a good idea, so we can place it right over there. We can then refill the market with a new tile, and it is a village, and that has finished our turn. This means the blue player can go, and it looks like they've decided to play four cards in order to play this tile out. Now, obviously, they don't have any agriculture cards in their hand, but this pair of wagons and this pair of quarry cards is enough to make it happen. Obviously, that is very expensive, considering they only draw two cards a turn, but they've decided that it's worth it to complete this size three region before the first scoring happens. They can tell yellow is likely about to trigger that scoring, so they figured this was a good play for them. Now, they did complete a size 3 region, so that is going to give them 6 green points right now. They were at 7, so that's going to bring them all the way up to 13. After that, they would score for the agriculture tile they just put down, but as I mentioned before, they did not add a new type into this region, so they don't get any benefit scoring there, but they felt like those 6 points were well worth it. So, blue is now done with their turn, and they have no cards or tiles in front of them at this point. This means yellow can go, and they have indeed decided to reserve a tile. After considering these options, they would like to take this city, and then they have to refill the market, and that is going to reveal this monastery. So that will go into the market, and now we can all see that one player has completely emptied their first stack, and that means the first scoring has been triggered. Now, whenever a scoring is triggered, we are going to finish the round before we actually score those points, but since we were the starting player... That means the round will always come to an end after the yellow player's turn, and they are indeed done, so the triggered scoring now happens. The way this works is rather simple. Players are simply going to take the number of green points that they currently have, and they will add those to their current amount of red points. That means yellow is going to add 6 to 1, which brings them up to 7. We are going to add 7 to 0, which means we are also at 7. And then blue is going to add 13 to 0, which brings them up to 13 red points, and they are currently clearly in the lead. Well, the first scoring is now done, and before we move on, I would like to point out that the second scoring is going to trigger in the same way once any one player has removed all of the tiles from their second stack. Now, likewise, the third scoring, which will also be the final one, is going to be triggered once any one player has removed all of the tiles from their third stack, but this one is a little different. Once the third stack is revealed, we are going to finish the round and then play one more full round before the third scoring is performed. After that third scoring, the game will be over, and at that point, players can gain some extra red victory points based off of the things that they have in front of them. Every single tile on their player board, as well as every one of these different resources, is going to give them one red point, and for every three cards that a player has in their hand at the end of the game, they will also get one more red point. Once all of those have been added up to their red score, the player with the most red points will be the winner. Now, if there happens to be a tie amongst players, then the tied player who has the most empty spots within their overall territory will break the tie. If there is still a tie, then the player with the fewest victory points from the green scoring track will break it. And if players are still tied, then the player with the fewest remaining region cards in their hand will break the tie in their favor. Well, at this point, I've now covered just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial has come to a close. Now, I've decided that it'd be fun to play through the rest of this game, so I'm going to do that in an extended playthrough video, which you can find a link for down below in the description, or by clicking the I up in the top corner, and I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Castles of Tuscany. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. 
Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.